Okay, so where are we at? Uh, let's look at a function that I want to find the limit not as x goes to infinity, but at somehow an intermediate value. So you might remember that a function's domain is the list of all possible inputs, mm -hmm. right? All input values that actually give one and only one output. So if I gave you a function like f of x equals 2x squared minus 8 over 3x squared minus 6x, How would you know what the domain of this function is? So if we were going to use set notation, it's the set of all x that are real numbers such that So there's only one output. So no, are we at any risk of having more than one output? No. no not probably not. Really. How about less than one output? Are there any numbers you could plug in where you're not going to get an output? Probably somewhere. You might get an error. Yeah, see Maybe any trouble not, spots? Not that I can. If it was zero. If what was zero? X. If X were zero, wouldn't the bottom half of the equation be zero? Oh, okay. So if, if the denominator is zero, yeah. that would be bad. Yeah, you can't do that. Good. Okay. So you're seeing a specific instance. Let me make that a little more general. If the bottom happens to equal zero, that's bad. So let's say it's not equal to zero. Anything that makes the denominator not equal to zero, that's good. All right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, well, what values would make it zero? Now, incidentally, if you're, if you're teaching algebra one, you will teach factoring, but you might not teach factoring for this purpose. But just know that this is sort of something that's going to be um, used from what you do. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this. What common factors do these two things have? Three. They have a three. What else? Uh, X. X. This is 3x times what? 3x. X. Or X. X. So 3x times x. Minus 2. This is 3x times minus 2. So notice that 3x times negative 2. The way to double check factoring is distributing. So if going down is factoring, going back up would be distributing. And you better get back to where you were. So if those two things are in fact equal, I just need this not equal to 0. Well, the nice thing about factoring is then you can use something called the zero product property. That says that if two numbers multiply to zero, what do you know about those two numbers? They're one of them is zero. One of them is zero, right? If, if I just tell you I've got two numbers in my hand <laughs> and I multiply them together, right, and they come out zero, you know one of them is zero. That doesn't happen with anything else, right? The only way to get zero is like four times zero or zero times four, right? If you know that two numbers multiply to one, I could have anything in my hands. I could have three and a third. I could have 85 and 185th. You could really have virtually anything other than zero in your hands. So zero is special. It is the chosen child. Um, so if these things are not equal to zero, then you know that this term is not equal to zero, in which case x is not, not, equal, equal, to not equal to zero. Or two. Good. So a way to say this is, well, x can't be equal to zero. And two. two. X is not equal to two. So as long as you're not equal to zero and two, you're good to go. Now that sort of asks, asks a question. And the question is, well, what happens to this function as you get close to 0 and 2? And of course, that is the proverbial junior high question. Well, I can't do this, but how close can I get? Right? And it turns out that that's actually a really relevant 
tissue and all sorts of things. And that's sort of what calculus is based on. It's based on this sort of idea of, okay, if you're going to take the position of something and the position of it a little while later, you can't have zero time go by. Yeah. Right? right? You can't have the difference in your times be zero. That's meaningless. But how close could you get to zero without being there? And you know, you could talk about speed, you could talk about interest rates. How do you measure interest rates? Well, uh, you might say you measure how much money you have in your account now, and you measure it in a year. And you might say, well, but what if it fluctuates? Well, you measure it today, and you measure it tomorrow. And then you say, well, people are day traders. They actually, some people trade 5,000 times a day. So you measure it now, and you measure it five minutes from now. And it turns out that in five minutes, things can go radically. So you measure it now, and you measure it half a second from now. You can't measure it now and now. <laughs> but you get closer and closer, and that's what we're going to do here. So I want to know what happens as x gets really close to 0 of f of x. And I want to know as as x gets really close to 2 of f of x, what's going on? So just sort of talk me through, first off, let's go for two computational strategies. Computationally, you know I can't plug in 0. How would you sort of guess, if you had a computer, what it's getting close to? Graph it and look at it. OK. We could graph it, and let's say, you know, if it's, if it's sort of getting really close, you know, I'm going to put a circle there because it's not defined there. Mm -hmm. Getting really close to that, I'd say, well, gee, it looks like the height is getting pretty close to 1, right? Mm -hmm. On the flip side, it could look something like this. It could say, just go off crazy towards infinity, towards an infinite height there. And I'd say, well, gee, you know, that looks like what we were talking about before. It looks like it's diverging to infinity. And we'd write, say, an equals infinity over there. Now, there's something else that could happen. What if it goes really high on one side and goes really low on the other side? Well, now it doesn't look like it's even approaching infinity, right? Because if I'm just a hair over here, it'll do one thing. If I'm just a hair over here, it'll do something else. So you can't even write diverges to infinity at that point. Uh, there were also actually. What does it do? Sorry? What does it do at that point? Well, th what does it do? That's a good question. So we could graph it. We could look at the graph and sort of make an estimate. What else could we do computationally? You could make a table. Sure, we could make a table. And look for like so, one, negative one, half, negative half. Sounds good. I could make a table for my x values. I could put minus one, minus one half, minus one tenth minus one hundredth. And I could then do the sort of the positive values, you know, uh, plus one hundredth, plus one tenth, and so on. And I could sort of see where it's getting close to. Mm -hmm. okay? Believe it or not, there are some things where it's a little hard to tell there. So I'm going to justify doing something algebraically, because there are places it's hard to tell computationally. Okay. And it's just such a great opportunity to practice our algebra. Mm. We're going to do something computationally with that. OK, so here is our strategy. We'll start with the first one. Uh, well, the first thing that you might just check, we already sort of checked it over here, is well, wouldn't it just be great if you could just plug in 0? That would be marvelous. We would call that, anybody remember? That method for solving a limit is called substitution. You substitute in. It's not very original, but it's easy. So you don't ever want to lose. And, and somewhere, I, got, I built a problem that always suckers somebody. I've shown them a bunch of things, and then I put in this problem. And all you have to do is plug in the value, and it works just fine. But if you don't remember to check, if you don't remember to check, you do all this work, and it'll be a pain in the neck. So that should sort of be plan A. Plan B uh, should be algebra.
break cancellation. Okay? okay. What's that mean? Well, the problem here is that one of the factors in the bottom is zero. So let's think about factoring this for a moment. If I factor this, I'm just going to leave this out front for a moment. Let me sort of see what happens if I, if I factor the bottom. How's the bottom factor? Remind me. 3x plus 9x minus 2. Okay. Now let's try and factor the top. What factors out of the top? 2. 2. two. Nothing else? Nope, not. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll just write it up here. 2 times x squared minus 8. Minus 4. How's that? Oops. <laughs> Thank you. X squared minus 4. Uh, we'll pretend like I was testing your skills. Uh, so then we're going to factor this out. X plus 2, X minus 2. X plus 2, X minus 2. That's called the difference of two perfect squares. Yeah, Again, the double check, that's factoring. The double check, and if you were ever teaching Algebra 1, I want you just to sort of beat this into people. Uh, so I will beat it in by example. Uh, if you were going to check this, you would distribute the x to both terms. So you get an x squared minus 2x. Distribute the 2 plus 2x minus 4. And of course, the plus 2x and minus 2x would cancel, and you get exactly that. So that's what we have. So what do you notice about this wonderful x thing? Minus two is you have an x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. Now, here's the thing. We already agreed that this function does not work at 0. Mm -hmm. But for every value other than 0, for 0, these, this makes no sense. You're dividing by 0. But for 1.99999, this and that are equal, right? For any value besides 0, these are equal, so they cancel, right? So by algebraic cancellation, now x can't be one third? Well, so the problem is the bottom being zero. Yeah. Right? Well, which of these two terms was a problem? What do you mean? That three x. This is the term that was becoming zero. Mm -hmm. This is the term that we got zero. So we have this right here, but um, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. So what do we have? We have the we have the terms here canceling. This term goes to zero. What does this do? as x goes to 0. To 4? Goes to 4. OK. So what we have is the top getting really close to 4, and the bottom getting really close to mm, zero. 0. OK. So this is sort of going to 4 over 0. Well, what is 4 over 0? Dividing by zero is undefined, right? So this would be undefined. undefined. Hmm. Well, that's not so satisfactory. But we know that it's not converging. We know it's not getting close to a point. Well, what could I do besides that? 
well, that was one of the two values I was looking for. What's the other value I'm looking for? Time factor plus two. Two. Okay. So the other value I wanted to look at is I wanted to look at the limit as x goes to two. And I was thinking about having board because I can just replace it, right? Let's see what happens if I'm going to two. Well, now I have this wonderful insight that these cancel. Does that really make any progress here? Why? Plugging two in will no longer be on the top. You can Aha! substitute. We can plug, plug it in, which is called substitution. So substitution. We can sub two in on the top, and we get two over two plus two. On the bottom, we get three times two. So the top is eight, eight over six. Over six. Four over three. It turns out that one of the places that's not in our domain, as we get close to that, it's going to be undefined. It's going to shoot off to plus infinity sometimes and minus infinity other times. Here, it's going to get really close to four thirds. You'll actually see that in the graph too. You'll actually see that as you get close to two in the graph, it'll get close to a height of four thirds. As you get close to zero in the graph, it will shoot off, we'll call that a vertical.